Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. It is Friday. Mm. Happy Friday, everybody. And as always on a Friday, our guests of the day, including Thomas Drant standing by, brought to you by Langley Chrysler, enjoying no hassle, three-day returns, and 30-day exchanges on all used vehicles. Uh, so you can make sure what you get is just right for you. Don't just love your car. And you know the image that's going through my mind right now, strange addictions. Mm -hmm. Don't just love your car, love... <laughs> Buying it at LangleyChrysler.com. Stay away from that exhaust pipe. Rick had a phase with a 96 Civic. Uh, okay. 96 Civic. Mm. Yeah. No, I had a... <laughs> I'm thinking of that car I had 68 in... 68 uh, LTD. I had a red pickup truck in the 80s. Barely, <laughs> barely made it up the hill. <laughs> now, when you're talking barely making it up the hill, are we talking driving? And when I was the first guy to go over the Alex Fraser Bridge, that thing, it was putting <laughs> along, barely made it. I was one of the first people. Don't laugh, Ryan. Rick, the, the joke's over. Okay, let's okay, bring... Just let, so let, you know, let, he's making fun of the, you know, Don't make fun of my red pickup. We don't have to go through your car history. My first car was a 67 Mustang, though. I'm telling you. Really? My dad didn't want me to buy it, right? He drove it every day. Uh, from The Athletic, Thomas Drantz uh, joins us. Panthers and Canucks tonight. At Rogers Arena, how are you, sir? What was your first car? Uh, my first car was a Volkswagen Jetta, mm, and oh, uh, nice. I'm honestly just listening to you, gentlemen, wide-eyed. You're giving a new meaning to the word autoerotic. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, really good. Oh, that's good. That's good. Um, Spencer versus Spencer. In case uh, you didn't hear, I mean, we're assuming that Spencer Knight is going to play for the Panthers uh, tonight. Let's start with the Vancouver end uh, end of things. Spencer Martin, what do you know? Well, I just saw him leave the ice first, so he's starting. He's going to make his fourth NHL start. Um, you know, he's hasn't played an NHL game since 2016-17, and no NHL game that he's started has he surrendered fewer than three goals against. So, you know, the Canucks without Thatcher Demko, gentlemen, it's kind of like Donnie without Dolly. And oh, it's yeah. Not as, oh. It's just not as imposing. I'm not oh. as interested in seeing it. So, um, Very nice. so we'll go. We'll we'll. We'll see how it goes. It's a big opportunity for Spencer Martin. And I think at the end of the day, for this Canucks team, you know, they're down 15 million plus in, in salary, like in forwards. They're mm -hmm. down 8 million in net. And oh. there's no other way to approach this. But looking at it as, you know, perhaps, perhaps for this team in a best case scenario, um, you know, necessity can be the mother of, of invention, right? There, there's some things that they're trying that – Maybe they stick. Maybe there's something of value that they get out of this in terms of an evaluation or a player who fits well with a, with another player. You know, you've got, for example, Hoaglander with Pedersen and Besser. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's something that works. I mean, even if the Canucks lose tonight, maybe that's something that works. Maybe that shapes the near future for this team. You've got Vasily Pod Colson at the net front on power play two. Maybe Vasily Pod Colson at the net front works and is something we see going forward. They've got a fourth line that has... You know, Justin Bailey, Sheldon Dries, and um, Vasily Podkolzin. You know, Dries and Bailey don't have a ton of NHL experience. I don't think anyone's sort of penciling them into their optimal fourth line, but they share a lot of speed. Uh, you know, the bottom six, anyway, should be fast. Like, probably one of the fastest bottom six that the Canucks have iced all season. You know, what does that tell Jim Rutherford about what direction this team needs to go in? I I'm still curious to see some things from this team, even though, you know, facing the Panthers with a lineup this depleted and your mm. third string goaltender in net, uh, it's a very tough hill to climb tonight, gentlemen. How frustrating, Thomas, do you think it is for uh, the Canucks, uh, for players, knowing that uh, uh, testing, and we don't know the, the situation with the players that are out uh, for the Canucks, but how frustrating do you think it is uh, knowing that testing asymptomatic players will be uh, done with after the All-Star break? Yeah, you know, I'm a little bit torn on this because I think if you actually consider the timing of, for example, Thatcher Demko and JT Miller hitting the COVID protocol list, you know, at least at least they hit it in Canada, right? They didn't hit mm -hmm. it in the United States where the complications are significantly 
more dramatic. And remember, once you've tested positive for 90 days, you're able to cross the border without testing again. The Canucks are at the point where they have 17 guys or 16 guys who've tested positive in just the last two months. So even when the league goes to asymptomatic testing, Canucks players are going to have to produce, you know, either proof of recent infection or, or a negative test prior to crossing the border. So regardless of whether or not you're randomly pulled out of game, you know, an hour before puck drop, the way Connor Garland nearly was in Carolina and then ultimately was the next day in Washington, uh, as the NHL protocols change, you're still going to need to produce negative tests to cross back and forth across the border. And so now for Canucks players like Demko, like Horvat, like Miller, you're also going to be exempt from that and uh, so I think that's a huge deal. Like, I think in some ways, you know, and, and it may not feel like it in the event that the Canucks drop two games at home this weekend, but in some ways for Miller and Demko anyway, I don't know that the timing could have been better. They're going to be exempt through the majority of the regular season now from testing even across the border, their availability effectively unquestioned on their return from the COVID protocol list this weekend. Okay, Thomas, uh, big hire by the Canucks yesterday, Rachel Dory in the analytics uh, department. She comes with a lot of experience, Sudbury, New Jersey Devils, Hockey Canada. Your thoughts on the hiring? Well, it's a sharp hire. Rachel's a smart person. She's uh, very qualified. I think she'll bring an awful lot to this group. And I'm really curious to see what's next. Jim Rutherford told me that he may, might double the size of the Canucks' analytics department. Of course, it was four people previously. Having added Rachel yesterday, it's four people again. So perhaps we're not done seeing his work or his handiwork growing that department over the next two, three months. Uh, this to me is a huge change, right? The Canucks analytics department has tended to be pretty well integrated into various layers of the organization's um, you know, functioning, but that was sort of unofficial. It was kind of done under the cover of darkness. It wasn't necessarily done with the general manager's explicit approval or, or integration of you know, Aiden Fox's tactical analysis, for example, into the coaching staff. It was just that over time, Aiden Fox and Travis Green had a close relationship and he, tur and he ended up serving in that role. You know, Jim Rutherford has spent a lot of time on his analytics department, right? Rachel Dory is not a hire that, you know, was recommended from beneath him. He brought Rachel to Aiden and asked him to consider her. Uh, they pulled her out of the fire when she had multiple offers to go to other teams. Jim Rutherford specifically and personally spent time making sure they landed this person for his front office. And, you know, she's not the only person outside of the organization that Rutherford personally has reached out to. He spent some time kicking the tires, um, you know, looking for a director of analytics uh, outside the organization, talking to some of the most progressive, smartest people in the in the industry, uh, really trying to add that analytical horsepower to the club and talking to him yesterday. And, you know, I've sort of been reporting this on the fringes, but, you know, what I'd heard uh, through the grapevine, as it were, was that the Canucks were more likely at this juncture to promote internally uh, for a director of analytics. Uh, talking to Rutherford yesterday, he had a lot of praise for Aiden Fox, um, a longtime Canucks analyst, been with the organization for the better part of a decade, um, and said that for the moment he is holding down the functions of a director of analytics. Um, and while no final decisions have been made, it does seem like that's the most likely outcome as Rutherford continues to sort through the R&D arm of his hockey operations department. Uh, Thomas, quickly, if I uh, uh, was told yesterday, final interview starting face-to-face, -face, Patrick Alvin, Scott Mellenby got going, uh, Sean Burke, I believe, is in town uh, getting interviewed as well as another uh, one that we've heard. Uh, your thoughts, how is it going to break down, who's getting it, what's the time frame there for the new GM? Yeah, I, I mean, I asked Rutherford directly, Rick, and, and I said to him, I said, you know, we're hearing that a decision might come whether or not an announcement is made. A decision might be made this weekend, Jim. Like, I, I, I said that to him directly yesterday, and he was, uh, as you might expect, pretty cagey, right? We've narrowed the list to five. We're now working on narrowing yes. it to one. I do think he's getting close, though. I do think he's getting very close. And I do think the major criteria here as he assesses this team and as he assesses what they need, like what he wants really is a hockey guy who can help him identify better hockey players, right? That can, that can win more games for this team. I don't think it's very complicated. 
Uh, I think this organization will ultimately add to their front office structure beyond yes. the GM, and they'll add some of the you know CBA compliance expertise, the negotiating expertise. They'll add some of those nuts and bolts uh, aspects of the department that right now they're extremely lean in, right? They are extremely lean, having made the changes that they did in, in early December in those areas. They will add people with expertise in those areas in the days ahead, but fundamentally expect the GM to be a first-time GM, a talent evaluator first and foremost, right? And, and a hockey guy who can help them identify the types of players that Jim Rutherford feels can help this organization with. I'm hearing like uh, Thomas, uh, they'll, they'll – uh, you know, pick the the GM soon. They might not announce it right away, but I, I'm with uh, Thomas on that one. Okay. Wrap up the interview with uh, Thomas oh, here. Thomas, uh, yeah. were you were you in that uh, TV show Cheers? No oh, man. Oh wow, I love Woody. Mm. Woody, that's great. Uh, well, that's easy. great. I'm a handsome guy. I'm extremely <laughs> flattered. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He was. Yeah. Uh, He's the best. He's the best. Woody Harrelson. Awesome. I love it. Thank and, and, you. And you know what? He went from Cheers, which was so good, Donnie, and, and he went into movies and did well in movies, too. Natural uh, Born True Killers. Detective season, yeah. yeah. Natural Born Killers, amazing. True Detective season one. True Detective one. was really good. I still, yeah. I still ride for season one. I think it's incredible. Like some of the best TV I've ever seen. And yeah. he's excellent in it. Good really guy. Good. good actor. White Man Can Jump as well. He was good in that. He just did yeah. a Netflix incredible. movie recently. Good guy. Uh, Woody didn't look like that when he was in Cheers, though. <laughs> Thomas, thanks for this. Appreciate it. Uh, have fun watching the team you cover uh, tonight and the team you used to work for, the Florida Panthers. Yeah. Yeah, always a fun game. It's uh, it's always weird to see the Panthers play the Canucks when I don't have money on the board, gentlemen. But uh, but so it goes. It'll be an interesting night at Rogers Arena. I'm just glad. I'm just excited to be back in this rink yeah. watching this yes. team with yeah. fans in attendance. Let's Absolutely. go. Absolutely. Yeah. Sp speaking of which, that has uh, that'll be the focus of our poll question. Fans in the building uh, tonight, something like that. Thomas, thanks so much. One of these days, I want to do like a whole segment with you on why you took that Florida job and what that whole experience was like, and did you see the I'd success? coming yeah we'll, we'll do that one of these days i think it's interesting thomas thanks for this appreciate it anytime gentlemen be well